So uh, later on that year, um, after you dropped the mixtape, BJ actually formed uh, Work That Gang, and um, originally that was uh, you, BJ, Cino, Dre Butters, correct? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so, what was it like when you started working with with Dre Butters and Cino? I'm pretty sure you had worked with them like before that. But I kind of yeah, like, cause we did like, like work that. So, right. but like once work that game kind of formed, that was that right there. That's when I was like, oh yeah, cause that's when I was like really open my eyes to the real work of like Butters and see, no, the niggas work. You know, what I mean? like no, the niggas work for real. Ain't no time wasted. You be in the studio with the niggas. It, it, it's records being produced. You know what I'm saying? So. I wasn't used to that. I'm really used to being. I, I was always used to being isolated in the studio. Just I I, I ain't used to having hoes in the studio. I was just other people in the studio, and then that shit, I just be by myself in the studio. So going into that, I kind of had to open up and just be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like it's how it is. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's just yeah, it just kind of just came about that way. Right. So um, what do you know like? What was the reason behind uh, even forming you guys? Like, did it happen on an accident? Because you oh, guys were in the studio together? Or, like, like was it a formula? Between the, I don't think nothing happened on accident. So, that was basically God's plan. Because, like, this is, you got Sino. And then, like, it's literally, the, the, the group is, like, the craziest mix. You know what I'm saying? You just got Big Five. That nigga is that nigga. You got Butters is the GOAT. You know what I'm saying? You got BJ. The hottest DJ in the city, just that nigga, you know what I'm saying? And you got me, think just the young nigga. You know what I'm saying? So the group was just like, damn, it's, it's, it's perfect. You know what I'm saying? Just the image, the way it looked, just looked good. And then we came about We Up, and we crushed them. You know what I'm saying? Right. We started making the city dance. Right, right. So, yeah, let's actually talk about that. In 2019, you guys actually uh, dropped We Up with, with an added member, uh, B. Ryan. Um, let's talk about We Up, man. Let's talk about like the success uh behind We Up. Um Detroit Classic. Yeah. Uh describe yeah. like describe like how, how that song actually came about. Cause I I, that, I actually that you, shit, you were actually the last verse. I was the last verse on this shit. Yeah, you're the so last verse like, on We up the craziest shit, man. So I was I got called to the studio, it's Butter's birthday. Uh he niggas his butters in there just doing what he do, just doing his shit, right? And then out of nowhere, his girl bring bringing the bottles. I think it might have been so it might have been the Remy, some put it on ice though. You know what I'm saying? And then butters just come up with the bring out the bottles of rose and put them on. And he just did his thing right there. And then out of nowhere, we just knew it was just like something right there. And then Cino just started cooking up his shit. And then I remember B Ryan was in the booth, and they uh, they actually did their thing. They laced we up that night, and I was just in there, watching, turning up with the game. You know what I'm saying? And then the next day, I wake up, Cino hit me in the morning like, "Hey, have an eight bar ready? You hopping on that song?" I mean, I was, I was happy as hell. So like, what's crazy is, I thought we were recording that night. So like, really, we got hit the studio at like seven o'clock. And I'm thinking it's going to be like 10 or something. So I ain't even have my verse ready. And uh, I walk into the studio. See no call me walk into the studio. We at B&B at this point. I walk downstairs. This nigga Mario Chalmers in the booth. The whole gang in there. I'm like, what the hell? Shocked. Right? I'm like, oh, damn. So really, when We Up came about, like, when I was recording my verse, I was kind of like under pressure. Because I don't know, like I said, when I was just kind of getting into the... Before I started, like, finding myself with the music, I was just, like, shy breaking out my shell. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn, I got all these, everybody in the stool right now. I'm like, I got to do my thing. So, like, I ain't had nothing written. And, like, the first thing I just felt was this fuck a mood swing. You ain't used to how I do things. Everybody turned up. And I was like, oh, yeah. So then I just came, started punching in on that bitch. And then that was kind of, like, when I found my niche with the shit, just like breaking my shell with recording around everybody and just kind of loosening up with the shit. And that's when I just got real comfortable with everything, bro, and just slid through the verse. I was like, 
Would you rather argue in that Buick or that new range? Mario Chalmers like, shit, we got that Musain on time. I'm like, oh yeah, that Musain. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? That shit was just the vibe, bro. It was crazy to me. Young nigga too. So it was just like, that was some shit, bro. It was a whole experience. The whole, the whole making of the record was a movie. So I know the, the record itself was going to be a movie like it was. And... And it did what it did. I feel like if COVID didn't shut everything down, it would have really, really exploded. But it did what it did. Still to this day, I get love every day. Like, oh, yeah, you. That's him. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, yeah, yeah man, let's talk about um, the success of uh, We Up. Like, after you guys, like, okay, we already see, like, how, how much your life changed before the record even came out. Like, just like recording a record was just like a whole classic moment in your life. So let's talk about like once the record actually dropped, you know, um, did it take people a while to catch on to it? Like what's your perspective on um, um, what how how things went after you guys actually dropped the record? That might be like, that might be like, in my opinion, I thought it took off quick as hell. Like I just like, cause I wasn't used to records taking off, you know what I'm saying? DJ probably been through the shit a million times, so he, he might have been, like, you know what I'm saying, like, waiting for it to really catch traction. I thought right away this shit was like, oh, my God. But I think, and realistically, it might have been, like, it might have took a minute. Not a minute, though, but, like, just because it was so different. It just hit, and everybody was like, oh, shit, we got, we got a ballroom. I don't think nobody had a ballroom. <laughs> yeah. I don't think nobody had a ballroom. We got a ballroom, you know what I'm saying? So, at that point, I had to learn how to ballroom. I ain't even know how to ballroom then. Right. So, so what's the what what's the best experience that you've had from like, um, you know, directly from that song? Like, what's a relationship or maybe a performance that you've got like, based off of the success of that song? Like. What's the best story that you A lot had? of experience was brought, like, a lot of new experiences. Some shit I never experienced before, like doing shows and people singing it word for word. You get that feeling. That's a feeling, bro. Like, even now to this day, I'll be in a club and I'll come on my voice and I'll be like, fuck a moose, and I'll look in the crowd. Females, niggas, everybody. You know what I'm saying? Fuck a moose, and you see the fingers go up. That's a feeling, bro. That's like, oh shit. Like, they fuck with it, you know what I'm saying? That's that's like, damn, I've been working for that, you know what I'm saying? So that just proves that if you can have this many people fucking with it, you got that many people fucking with it, you know what I'm saying? So right. It's kind of like a milestone to me too, though, just the feedback and just like the love off it. Like, shit, we did shows. We did shows in Cleveland. Uh, we just did like new experiences, bro, hitting the road, doing shows off that record, you know what I'm saying? Like, boom, COVID hit. COVID kind of like shut the steam down a little bit. So, um, how did you actually um, handle having fans after the record dropped? Cause like you, you had like you know you had like a a, a good fan base before, but it's kind of like after this record drop, it's like I got the I got the older fan base off this. Yeah, record, like you know you're, you're a real artist now. So. Yeah, so like it was all new. You know what I'm saying? I started like the other people started fucking with me. I really had like a super young wild fan base at first and now it was just like i got the respect from the older ogs and shit like that like we got a ball room so like i said it's different shit the older people fucking with it once the older people fuck with you you know what i'm saying you know you you, you know you're doing something they can throw it on in a barbecue you know they got love you know okay I mean? um i, w I actually want to ask you this too because i interview uh bj and he talked about like how the song may have uh handicapped the crew and in a lot of ways like after the song dropped instead of you guys like kind of like uh gassing you know like you know pushing gas kind of like step back kind of step back. back and you know like kind of relished in the success of the song mm -hmm. instead of like you know you yeah definitely that we, we, we i feel like keep, you know keep gassing keep gassing we could have yeah. definitely we could have definitely kept gassing for sure for sure why why is that though like why how come i think that's that was the only year you you um since you've been signed to VJ that you didn't drop a project, you know. Uh, why is it that like, you know that you chose that year to 
uh, say, uh, I don't really want to drop a project. Or Damn, in our reality, I ain't even peeped that. That's crazy, ain't it? Yeah. And that was, that was the that was the year where I kind of got like lost within myself. Maybe you know what I'm saying. I was kind of like, like not like relying on the work that game, but like you know what I'm saying. Just like, like not lost in it completely, but like just ready to work when they ready to work. And that's when that's that kind of was around the time where niggas sent me down and was like, all right, Gene, you gotta you gotta start. You know what I'm saying? Pushing and doing your thing, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? Like getting in the studio and working. You gotta find you know an identity. Saying? Yeah, I gotta find an identity, you know what I'm saying? Really get to right. it, really start working, working. Right. You know, so kinda went about like that for real. Can we can we talk about like how, how things were going uh in your personal life around that time? Like how how are things going like as far as like family or friends was, when it when it when it comes to uh that time in your life? Like a lot of goofy shit. A lot of in a personal life, a lot of fake niggas, <laughs> a lot of fake shit going on. You know what I'm saying? Because like, it's like a lot of people can't stomach when 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 you when you around people from like to the point to where like you ain't had shit for real, no name, nothing. It either goes one way or it goes another. It's either people love it, they love it, they embrace it, they will push you. Or people can't stomach the fact that you're growing. You know what I'm saying? So I was dealing with a lot of fake goofy shit. You know what I'm saying? So I was kind of just, I was, in, I was, I was just too you know, indulged into that. For real, for real. That was kind of throwing me off too at that time. And at that point, I was living with my mom still. You know what I'm saying? With mom and dad. So I, and then like, I was just getting new attention. And then like, I was pulling bad hoes. So I can't pull bad bitches back to the crib, back to my mama house. A little shorty like, Grown as hell, I can't, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm all in, in that thought process. Like, look, I gotta really step up my game and my, my you know what I'm saying? I gotta step my shit up too. I gotta get out of my, my house. I gotta grow up, you know what I'm saying? In the midst of dealing with the fake shit, in the midst of staying on my shit, recording music and getting it together, you know what I'm saying? And even at that point, it didn't all happen like that. But I started, I broke everything down and started handling things one by one. And that's when I really, that was kind of my transition into growing up to being an adult. When I learned how to manage shit, you know what I'm saying? 